Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a lovely detailed painting of some clematis and I've chosen the Florida variety because it's got the most incredible purple centre and white petals. So grab your paints and let's get started. Time to paint our clematis. So we're going to have a, a sort of creeping clematis stem coming down and we're going to have leaves coming off and let's have a flower here and we'll have we'll have our flower coming off there as well so we're going to have a nice open face flower here and one sort of a bit more straight on to us so we'll have this one will be sort of slightly angled so you see I've done more of a, an oval shape and this one more of a circle so those flowers will lead there so I'm just walking this through in my brain and we'll have some more spindly leaves coming off there. So the clematis has all sorts going on um, but most importantly is that we have arranged it so we've got space for our flowers and then our leaves can be sprouting off in all sorts of directions afterwards. We don't need to be drawing in anything more than that at this point so goodbye pencil. <laughs> and we can begin with our flowers. Now, I have decided to paint the Florida variety of clematis flower. There, gosh, there were just so many to choose from when I was looking. Um, and I really like the Florida one because it's got this incredible furry, fluffy green purple center. Um, and the petals themselves are white. So we're going to start with our white petals. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing a very dilute colour that will work as white in inverted commas. So we have we've got a bit of sap green, a bit of green gold, then just off camera up here we've got French ultramarine and a little bit of burnt sienna just to shadowy, um, get the shadowy tones in there and also plenty of water. Now a clematis flower has six petals um, so I am going to begin by painting in the six petals here with my size eight brush. And I'm going to squash my brush down in two mirroring strokes. And I'm going to then do the sort of the alternating strokes, I suppose. So you can just barely see three petals in this very, very dilute colour. Now here our petals are going to be a bit more on an angle. So my first petal coming out there, the next one a little bit, it's just a little bit more squashed and the last one there. Now we need to let these dry but the colour is very nice. The only thing we could do is we could add just a fraction of detail down the center and I'm just allowing these to just dry a tiny bit and seep in as I mix in a fractionally more concentrated color. So I've got my size two brush and I am just going to run a tiny bit of that color from the tip of the petal down in and what I want is for that to just feather out a tiny bit and yeah, seep in and dry. It'll, it'll lighten as it dries. Um, and these ones here could do the same. These two petals are still quite wet, so I'm just gonna hold off. It's a really interesting point actually about how wet your page should be when you're painting and how much control you want. Um, I've just done a watercolor quick fix all about this. Um, it's just five minutes, it's really, really simple. We just look at one thing at once and it's all about how much water to be putting on your page and what the results will be in uh, putting paint then on that wet page. So these two petals can probably see from the side angle are just a little bit more wet than this one here so that the paint would travel even further because it's got more sort of water between it and the page. But as I've been talking, it's seeped in a little bit, but yeah, happy with that. So whilst we wait for our petals to dry, to allow us to paint in the next ones, I can start looking at my stem. So I've got some burnt sienna 
and some sap green because the clemat the main clematis sort of branch has definitely got this sort of warm woody green color so mixing in burnt sienna with green gold and some sap green is a really nice way to start so with my size 2 brush coming down that first branch and then coming along it's quite a slender stem so just twist it round okay and we've got the beginnings of our branches I'm not going to go too much further because I don't want to sort of hamper the amount of space that my flowers have got but I can start popping in a few leaves so here I go with my sap green and I'm just going to begin with the sap green on its own and I also need a little bit more of a branch so I'll get a small brush I got my three tenths and off each of those slender branches comes even more because the clematis is this climbing creeping wayward plant that has branches growing out in all directions and the leaves themselves are quite sort of rounded shapes so we can just achieve that with a nice sort of mirrored C curves and S curves and sometimes we can just do it in a single brush stroke as well like that there so they have th sort of three leaves that come off at different angles now if you can't sort of squeeze them all in that's fine but we really want to try and capture that sense of a sort of abundant clematis. So because this is the sort of early first stages of these leaves, I'm going to paint those in sort of overlapping on each other whilst they're still wet. So I'm now going to sort of repeat the process with some nice leaf shapes. Just again though, making sure that I don't get too much in the area of this. So I'll just do these top two. I'm now starting to sort of mentally work my way down the page um, and I see that my petals are dry so I can pop in the remaining three on each side and then that's great because I'll know now exactly how much space I've got to play with. I think the Florida um, clematis flower is a fantastic one for anyone who wants to have a go for the first time at a clematis because you've got a, a white petal um, which makes it very easy for you to paint in the colourful centre because the white petal is not going to make life at all difficult for putting colour on top of it. So I'm just adding my little extra bits down the centre of the petal. And now I can carry on with my leaves. So I've brought the um, branch further down that way. And you do also get leaves growing on these main branches here. So it sort of comes halfway down. There we go. Slightly larger leaf. And now I'm just going to fill in the rest of these branches with these loose leaves. So I'm now just going through and filling in the remaining leaves. And of course these petals are dry now so I can go right up next to them and not fear the colour bleeding in. And the great thing with a clematis is you can use these leaves 
to fill in and, and sort of even out the composition of the piece. So it's lovely that we can sort of find the gaps and just loosely place them. So at this point, we're just doing the very sort of simple shapes and we will be letting them dry and then adding in some lovely detail. Now these bigger leaves here, they grow at a sort of paired, they grow in pairs, that's what I'm trying to say. They grow in pairs and so I am going to place in a second leaf to each one here because they have dried nicely. And this one will be coming in behind the flower. So I'm just being careful to paint around. Using my size four brush, it's a large brush, but if you've got nice, sort of well looked after pointed round brushes, you can still do really lovely detail with them. Okay, so we're going to just keep with the leaves for the moment because we're going to get all of those done and then we can have some fun with the flower itself. So I've got some French ultramarine blue here and I'm also mixing in some sap green to make a really nice deep and intense sort of piney green which is going to be what we'll use for our leaf detail. I've become a bit of a convert for detail on leaves since doing the dandelion uh, a few sessions ago because I just, yeah, I just sort of overcame my fears a bit and I'm going to show you again just some nice ways to do some leaf lines. So we're going to begin with a 3 tenths brush and on a dry leaf, it's very important the leaf has dried, we're going to get a sort of central line going, clean off the brush, and now this looks very sort of basic and sort of childish, but we're just spreading that colour out onto the leaf, and now clean that brush right off with a bit more water on it. We're just going to sort of soften and blend that into the rest of the body of the leaf. So it's, it's almost disappeared, but we have a faint sense of some leaf detail. So I'm going to do that again. It's quite a broad line. Um, and then I'm just using the color there with my wet brush to push it out. And I'm very much making sure that central line gave me the, the sort of angle and curve and bend of the leaf. That's what leaf lines are for, really. And now cleaning off the brush, just softening and pushing it out to the edges, giving us a little something to work with. Because watercolour is all about layers and working slowly and methodically to build up layers, even if you've started off with a, a rather sort of quick and loose beginning, which is how we started these leaves. Now we're in the detail section and it's just all about taking your time and slowly building up those layers. If you just plonked in a solid line with some veins coming off it, it would just look, well, it would look rubbish, quite frankly, and that's not what we're about. So we are going slowly. So once more, it's quite a broad line up the middle. Clean that brush off and then use the wetness and the rather faint colour that you've already got just to start creating a semblance of some texture. So I'm going to return to this one here because it has dried. So it's very important to have left your leaf to dry. And now I'm going to go back in with a fine line of detail and just a very gentle little C curve that's just fading off into nothing. And then I'm also now going to give a little bit of an edge 
to this leaf and then I'm going to blend that in and suddenly we've got a rather lovely detailed leaf. So it's all about building up those layers slowly. So I am now going to work my way through all of these leaves, giving them lots of lovely detail. So this will take a little bit of time, but watercolour is all about giving yourself some time to yourself to create and enjoy the process. I thought I'd invite you to join me for the last few, um, however many weeks later it's taken to paint the rest of these leaves um, because we can also add in a bit of just French ultramarine blue to really heighten the contrast in the shadow on those leaves. So also, because I painted these all in one go, we, we need to sort of get a bit of definition there. So I can pop in that darker colour underneath and all of a sudden we've created a nice uh, top leaf, a nice bit of difference between the two. And then if I get just a bit more French ultramarine really mixed in with that dark green there, you can just get a really strong contrast along the edge. And it works rather nicely. So do be brave with your leaves because I've found um, a, a real newfound joy for painting in detail on leaves because you can really be quite bold with it and you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's just all about slowly building up the layers. Now, whilst we're with this nice sort of shadowy botanical colour, we can add just a little bit of definition to our branch. giving it a bit of shadow where it sort of comes from underneath something else. And then of course it's just trailing off, continuing on with its growth. And I like to sort of extend that green a bit further down the stems with these little sort of leaf growths. Um, just to sort of get a bit more of a sense of cohesion with the leaves growing. Okay, I think we're finally ready to tackle these flowers. So I'll just get some new water, clean my palette, and we can go. Although I do have a cobalt violet here, I prefer the mixing of cobalt blue deep and alizarin and crimson to get me uh, just the slightly more um, sort of wine colored purple that I need. Now I'm using a size 4 brush to start off um, and I'll probably go a bit smaller as I get towards the centre. But I'm going to use that pencil line to begin these amazing purple, um, so it's almost like feathers that are coming out of the centre of this flower and I'm going to paint them in a really dilute way, getting the nice fine tips and squishing the belly of the brush down. And as I get towards the back, I'm really going to fade away. I don't want too much. Um, I'm going to repeat this in a more open circle shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up layers of this, but we need to make sure that our purple remains fairly dilute because there is lots to go on top. So what we will be doing 
is adding sort of a bit more concentrated tips of colour to the outer tips. So I'm just going to build up a few layers of these, letting them dry between each layer. So you can see here that we've built up nice layers, so I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing it here. Um, still with my purples, but sort of mixing up various different consistencies and some I'm just using a bit of concentrated colour like that to just add like a tip. Sometimes I'm coming in from sort of underneath and adding in just the edges of darker versions like that, but I'm just trying to keep like a nice even shape going round but keeping the colour in the middle really light so I'm not going in with these heavy colours right into the middle. And mixing in the sort of more bluey purple with the more wine coloured purple that I've got here. If you're struggling to get a, a sort of really nice claret colour, then you could always mix in a little bit of cadmium red with your blue and pink, just to get it slightly more earthy. I appreciate that we all have different brands of paint that we're working with, and so there will be little discrepancies between well, there'll be differences between, say, my sap green and your sap green, which is something that we've been discussing over on my Patreon recently. Um, it's been a really fantastic sort of forum for um, everybody to compare notes on what materials they're using. It's so much more than just um, sort of more tutorials, really. So if you are looking for a bit of a sort of art community to join, then um, I, my patrons are absolutely amazing and um, I'm absolutely loving every minute so I uh, highly recommend you you give it uh, give it a little watch of um, we've got a we've got a patreon sampler video uh, pinned to the top of my channel which you can watch and see a little sneak peek of some of the tutorials that we've got going over the, on there some landscape painting some tree painting and at the moment we're doing lots of flowers and vases, glass vases and things. So all sorts of things that you might be keen to build upon. Okay, so we've got lovely sort of flame-like purple centres to these flowers. And now we need to mix up a nice zesty green. To finish off our flowers, we've got a sort of more upturned central set of these little flame-like um, filaments. And I'm just using a mixture of sap green, lemon yellow, to create just the beginnings of this central piece. So I'm using sea curves uh, on that side-on flower. And then in here, I'm gonna start from the center and almost as if we were painting a sort of simple rose shape, I'm doing C curves that are sort of just wrapping around the edge of each other. Using again that central pencil circle that I painted, that I drew, sorry, to give me a good guide. And we're gonna let this dry and then we're going to come in with a little bit of detail. So the first thing I've done is just done a little bit of sap green around the edge. And now I'm taking some Alizar and Crimson in my three tenths brush. And I am going to just add some little tips of this Alizar and Crimson so I can sort of create the what sort of has blended into one another. You can sort of redefine these shapes just with some little sort of tops of the 
shapes just and then doing just a few dabs with the brush to get into the middle and then a little bit around the edge just getting out there and then in the center again just using the green strokes that I've already done to give them a little bit of a pink tip and again it's not always obvious where you've painted so just as long as you are sort of following that rose-like structure around the edge then you are going to be just fine. So that is a sort of a fairly detailed approach to the Florida clematis flower um, and what we're going to do next is just add in a little bit of shadow but the first bit of shadow is going to involve these petals um, because I just want to add a few little brush strokes just from the tips of those petals using the petal colour from the very beginning but adding in a bit of shadow to it just so it's a little bit stronger. And now we're going to mix up some shadow and just finish this piece right off. So I've got my usual shadow mix of Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine Blue and first thing to do is just adding a little bit of it to the sort of bottom half of that centre and then to the bottom half of the purple. And I've already done one petal there. You really don't want to go too extreme with the concentration of your shadow on the petals. So just be cautious, but we're doing it on that sort of the lower half of the flower that would get less of the sunlight. And then here, shadow's gonna come in the form of the front half. And then petals, so of course they are slightly overlapped, so we can just help that become a bit more defined and get that central clematis line. If your shadow comes out a bit strong like that one did just then, you can just clean your brush off and use a bit of water. we don't need much shadow at all once you've done those initial bits. Then with a smaller brush, I'm just gonna add that shadow color into the areas I've already sort of done a little bit of darkness on the stems. And there'll be areas where we haven't spotted we need it. There we go. And So this has been a, a sort of detailed one, but hopefully one that you can be very proud of because I think it just looks really impressive, especially when you've got all those leaves that you've painted with all that detail. I think we're really becoming proper flower painters And what's nice for me is I get the chance to just sit and paint for you guys, uh, whereas I probably wouldn't take all this time to do it. So I feel like I'm becoming a better painter too. So I must thank you for that. Okay, 
we did it. There we have the Florida clematis flower. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and let me know in the comments how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.